I want to talk to you more this morning on bodily healing that comes through the atonement that Jesus did on Calvary. And we talked some last week about how important it is that we be well, spirit, soul, and body. The word heal, H-E-A-L, does mean to cure, right? That's, that's the reason I like the Bible, because it's the double cure. Healing for the spirit, healing for the body, amen? The old double cure, amen? The word heal also means to restore to health. In other words, to make well. Did you know somebody can be well in their spirit? Like, how is everything? Well, all is well, the woman said. Or you could be well in the spirit, you could be sick in your body. Or you could even be well in your body and be sick in your soul. What we're told to do by the Word of God is bring wellness in together. Amen? So you can be well in your spirit, in your soul. There are different ways that a person can be healed. Somebody might give a testimony of how they got their healing. And it might not even be the way you get yours. Amen? You have to be open to God. Some people might say, well, God can heal me when he gets around to it and wants to. Well, let me give you a scenario here. Suppose there is an individual that goes to a doctor and the doctor examines this patient and says, well, I am going to prescribe exercise and a diet for you. somebody might say, well, I just prefer an instantaneous miracle right there, you know. God doesn't always work that way. Exercise, you say? Yeah. Is God in favor of exercising? Well, let me put it to you this way. He made his only begotten son walk everywhere he went. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so who do you think you are and me to think that God's going to require any less out of us? No, God's okay. The Bible says bodily exercise profiteth a little. Of course, godliness is profitable unto all things, right? But exercise and a changing of your diet can go oh, maybe a long ways in regard to a person getting healed, if that's the case of what they are dealing with in their illness. Um, in regard to that, we need to understand that our physical bodies, bodily healing for our physical bodies can be involving something other than just spiritual things. And what I'm saying is there are natural laws that pertain to natural things. God put them there. There are spiritual laws that pertain to spiritual things. God put them there. Amen? And there are more natural laws than just gravity. 
that's a big one. There are natural laws that pertain to our physical bodies. I was wanting to read the scripture here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 44. Of course, this is the great resurrection chapter, and that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about, the resurrection of our natural bodies and in our spiritual body. And, uh, of course, he gives the examples here of what the natural body is. A natural body is sown in dishonor, but then it is raised as a spiritual body. And he says in verse 44 uh, that there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. A natural body, flesh and blood and bone, Spiritual body is the spirit inside of us, right? Now, once again, God does not completely ignore your natural body. Present your body. We talked about that last week. A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. And that's just your reasonable service, right? Now, a healthy lifestyle. Now, I'm talking about healthy in every respect of the word. Eating right. Taking care of yourself right. Doing all these things are beneficial. No, no question about it. I mean, I think you would be hard pressed to find any doctor that says... It doesn't matter what you do with your body. Have you ever found one that says that? I don't think I'd want to go to that doctor very long. Because he might tell you to do some things that's very harmful to your body. And say, oh, don't worry about it. I've got a pill for your ill and don't worry about it. No, no, no. It doesn't really, in God's eyes, he doesn't really look at it that way. He says, uh, do what I tell you to do with your physical body. And, uh, yeah, and you know what? Healings can come in gradual, or they can come instantaneous, but uh, healings can come gradually. Did you know that? Gradually healings can come. And, and sometimes I tend to believe that that may be the most effective way to not only get your healing, but to keep your healing. If you have made adjustments in your lifestyle that uh, will uh, benefit you and you get your healing and, and you've already won, you're already in that lifestyle. But if you get a healing and then go back out here and start doing things that's damaging to your physical body, let me tell you what, just because somebody got healed doesn't mean they're going to keep it. Right? No. No. We have something to do ourselves. And I'm talking in the physical. I'm talking more in the natural and uh, in that regard. Now, we know doctors, people can tell you there are certain things that can get wrong with you. Maybe some kind of a terrible disease or something that can grip your body. And doctors... They still say it. They've said it as long as I know. I don't know anything else to do. We can't help you from here. You ever, you ever heard doctors say that? Sure. I know. It can be said. We can't do any more for you. Now, that's the reason we don't want to stop with our healing in the natural realm. <laughs> Amen? And just the things I can do. Now, I, I believe God's involved in healing through uh, uh, doing natural things. I, I do. I believe God's in that. But God is also in to the things that are impossible with man. Right? What is impossible with man is still possible with God. Amen? God is not limited like medical science is limited. They haven't found a cure for 
however many. They might help you a little bit. No, they cannot guarantee. But see, that's man's impossibilities. But God says, with me, all things are possible. All right? Now, Jesus and Jesus alone is our divine healer. No matter how he does it, if he does it through medicines, if he does it through uh, naturopathic ways or whatever else, still God is in control of those things and he can bring, and its source of your healing is God himself. The source of your sicknesses is Satan himself. Don't ever forget that. All right. Jesus, divine here, is, is meaning a deity, a supernatural power, if you will. Now, Jesus being our healer, that goes back to, like I said, healing us spiritually and also physically in the atonement at Calvary. Now, Jesus there in Luke chapter 4, he stood up in the synagogue one Sabbath day and he says, he's been anointed to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted. That's spiritual. And also recovering of sight to the blind. You know. So he covered it all on Calvary. Our complete healing. Now, to establish how God looks at healing, we can look, even go all the way back, if you'd like to, to the book of Genesis. Genesis, yeah, the beginning book. Genesis, um, let's uh, go back to chapter 20 of the book of Genesis, all right? Now, here we have a story, and actually this is the first account of a healing and praying for healing mentioned in the Bible. So, uh, this is the old doctrine of first mention. You like those things? All right, here it is. Uh, Genesis chapter 20, let's go down here to verses um, 17 and 18, and uh, if, if you know the story here beginning in verse or chapter 20 uh, that's where Abraham and Sarah was in Urar in uh, the presence of Abimelech the king and um, uh, Abraham told a lie he said that's my sister to keep himself out of trouble and and it wasn't the whole truth. It was maybe a half-truth at the best. But anyway, that's what Abraham did. And, and um, uh, when Abimelech actually found out uh, the situation, well then, uh, uh, you know, he, he didn't know. So I, I don't fully blame Abimelech by no means. Uh, but the thing of it was still... Somebody was about to mess around with God's plan. I'll tell you what, you better not mess around with God's plan. You'll regret it, right? So what happened here, um, it goes on down here that, uh, of course, um, in verses 17 and 18 of the chapter explains more what had happened. And it says here in verse 17 that Abraham prayed unto God and God healed Abimelech. Well, what did Abraham have to pray about? Well, Abraham had something to do with this. Don't, don't get me wrong. Abimelech, and he also prayed not only for Abimelech, but for Abimelech's wife and, and it says right here, uh, and his maidservants. 
what had happened, you notice in verse 18, the Lord had fast closed up all of the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Now, I'll tell you what, that, that would take some prayer, but uh, uh, that's why Abraham prayed, and, uh, and it says that, you know, that God healed uh, Abimelech. It says that in verse 17. So that took a miracle. That, that was a miracle healing right there. But that's first mention of healing. And you, you can look even um, in, uh, uh, let's say, the book of Numbers. Just flip on over to the book of Numbers here. And we will find where uh, in chapter 12... We're going to find the story of, uh, uh, of Moses and uh, of Miriam. Miriam, uh, and we'll get just a little bit of background. We'll see what happened. This is another mention of healing. And it says here that Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses. That's not wise either. <laughs> you know. Do your prophets no harm, the Bible says, God's prophets no harm. But they spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. And it says here in verse 2, they said, Miriam and Aaron said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Here we have it again that God does not appreciate people uh, superseding his plan with their own plan. You see what I'm saying? Just stay with God's plan all the way through and you'll be better off. Now it says here, if you go on down to verse 13, uh, or actually you will find that uh, uh, Miriam in verse 10 uh, became leprous. You remember that? White as snow. And, um, and Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold, she was leprous. And then, uh, I'll read verse 11 and then 12 um, and 13. But he said, Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech you, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and whereof we have sinned. All right, they repented, right? And let her not be as one dead. Leprosy had a death sentence that went with it, of whom the flesh is half consumed. It just eat, eat away. When, she, uh, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And then it says in verse 13, Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. Heal her now. That was big of Moses, wasn't it? But God did what Moses asked. Amen? And prayed about. Powerful healing. Then you'll find in, in the book of uh, uh, Exodus, um, one more reference here, Exodus chapter 15. And uh, God here is... Delivering Israel, and, and um, we find here in um, verse 26 of where um, God had uh, delivered uh, the nation of Israel. And then in verse 26, and um, the Lord said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. Notice the word if. It's conditional. Mm -hmm. Healing can be conditional. And if you don't believe me, just go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and read all the verses. Some of them will tell you how you get healed if you're obedient. And the others will tell you how you stay sick if you're dis disobedient. Pretty, pretty clear cut. Really it is. All right. Now it says here, 
do that which is right in his sight, he said, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. Notice here, God says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Now, the word there, you say, well, God's making people sick. No, he would allow it. That's what it means, really, if you get to the root meaning here. God would allow these things to come upon the Israelites. The ones, we know they're Israelites, the ones he brought uh, out of uh, Egypt, but he brought those diseases upon the Egyptians. And then he says, for I am, right now, he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He is, that's one of the redemptive names of God, Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, which means I am the Lord that healeth you. He healeth you. So he is not only our deliverer out of bondage, he is our healer to keep us strong. Hallelujah. Now, New Testament time. Let's go to the book of Matthew, and I want us to look here first of all in Matthew chapter 10, and uh, let's go down, well, let's start here in verse 1, I want to read that to get a background foundation here. Uh, in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1, Jesus had called 12 disciples and then he sent them forth, right? Verse 1 says, When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, notice the next thing, and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. I like that. To heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Now it stops right there on that commission and lists the, uh, uh, the disciples. But let, let's go ahead and pick up on another example here in the New Testament. If you want to go to the Gospel of St. Luke, saying, uh, chapter 10 again. Luke chapter 10. And I want to read verse 1 to start with. Then I'll read verse 9. Verse 1 says, And these things the Lord appointed another 70. He had his 12. But he says, I'm going to appoint 70 more disciples. Right? This is a different situation. First he sent out his 12. Now he's sending out the 70. Right? And he sent them two and two before his face, unto every city and place, whether he himself would come. Now, if you go down here, and um, he started giving them instructions here of, you know, uh, take this with you, but don't take that. You go into the city, uh, you know, eat the things set before you, whatever. And then he says in verse 9, and heal the sick, right? Same thing he told the twelve. Heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, you know, it's, it's important to get healed, but people need to know how to stay healed, right? And say, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Think about that. Now, if you, if you go to, uh, let's flip back here to um, Mark... Um, Chapter 16, the last chapter of the book of Mark. And um, let's see what he says here. And we're talking about Jesus commissioning people to go out and preach the gospel. Right? In Mark chapter 16, I, I want to read the whole thing here, beginning in verse 15. This is what we call the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world. Mark 16, verse 15, and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. 
And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. The last thing he told them was, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something about that. Jesus never commissioned anybody, any time, any place, to go out and preach the gospel without preaching healing. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, how important is it? Right? Pretty important, isn't it? Right? Now, in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who was oppressed of the devil. Sicknesses is oppressing. When you get sick, you're, you're not the happiest person in the world, are you? No. You're oppressed. Now, oppression does not mean possession. That doesn't mean the devil has completely took you over and damned your soul to hell or anything. But it can be oppressing to be sick. That's the reason Jesus said, I come to heal you. Right? He came to heal. I want to point this out here. Um, Jesus needed to be anointed by the Holy Ghost. How come? He was a man like you and me. But he was a man that was filled and anointed. You like that word anointed? He was a man that was anointed of God. Who went about doing good. And why did God choose to do it that way? To show you and me that we as mortal men and women of God, we can still be anointed by the same Spirit of God and get the results that Jesus got. Hallelujah. Now, in the book of 1 Corinthians... Uh, let's, let's go to chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I want us to uh, look at uh, just one of the nine spiritual gifts. This is the chapter of, of the nine spiritual gifts that Paul wrote about. That's been given to who? To whom? <laughs> the body of Christ, the believers. Nine spiritual gifts given to to believers, diversities of gifts. And it says here in uh, verse 9, 1 Corinthians 12 and 9, uh, he mentions, you know, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, uh, uh, manifestations of the Spirit and prophecy, you know, and all the tongues and, and, and these things and interpretation of tongues and all. And then in verse 9, to another faith, this goes closely related to the gift that we're going to... Well, that is the gift, one of the gifts of the Spirit, but to the one I'm going to mention next. And then to one faith, to another faith, and then to another, the gifts of healing. Gifts, plural, meaning there's different kinds of healings that people receive. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. The different kinds of healings... It's from one spirit. Did I make that clear? <laughs> one spirit. One spirit. Amen. Now, somebody might think, you know, well, nine gifts of the spirit. I've heard some people say, wow, did you go hear that man preach? He's got all nine gifts of the spirit working in his ministry. Well, that would be impressive, all right. 
I am persuaded after somewhat studying the situation in the Bible that it's not man that turns that on and off. It's the Spirit. Amen? People can get caught up in things and, and you know, glorify man and glorify flesh and, and man and flesh does not deserve it. You see what I'm saying? So, yes, he does mention there, um, as the Spirit wills, is, uh, I, th I think, the correct uh, understanding there. I want, I want to point one other thing out to you. Um, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 13, and uh, let, let's go down to verse 58. Matthew 13, that's a long chapter, 58 verses, or 50, yeah, 57, 58 verses, yeah. All right, Matthew chapter 13, he's talking here, uh, beginning in verse 53, of where Jesus returned back to his hometown of Nazareth. Well, there wasn't much fanfare for the Galilean there, was there? You know what happened to Jesus? They rejected him. Think about it. The miracle working man was rejected by his own hometown. And notice, uh, he said in verse 57 here, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Now, 58, verse 58. In his own hometown, Jesus, he, could not, you're listening to me, could not do mighty works there. No, no, you must misread that, Brother David. No, I did not misread that. That's what my Bible says, and that's what yours says if it's the gospel. <laughs> he could not do it. Hmm. You know why? Because of their unbelief. Think about it. Now, let me tell you something. It's extremely important that we incorporate, yes, the Spirit of God. And we're going to have another scripture to go along with that in just a minute. But I'll give you this and then I'll move on to something else. It's very important for us to be led by the Spirit of God when ministering to people because if there is gross unbelief, you're not going to get anything accomplished of any significance, really. Amen? You ever heard of wasting your time? That can happen right there, church. Amen? So we get people believing. And then you can pray the prayer of faith. And there's a whole thing, a lot of scriptures in that regard. Now, all right. Let's find out here. i got three more points to make that of how Jesus uh, applied healing and used healing uh, on people's lives. Now, uh, we're right here in the book of Matthew, so let's start right there. Matthew chapter 8, if you will. And um, we're going to find out here of how Jesus healed by the spoken word. Did you know the Bible does say in the Old Testament that He sent His Word and He healed them? The Word of God has the power to heal. That's right. The Logos, the written, even definitely the Rhema Word has power to heal. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 8, actually beginning here in verse 5 where Jesus entered into Capernaum. And uh, there came a centurion unto him, and saying, uh, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And verse 7, Jesus, I will come and heal him. And the uh, centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. He said, I'm a man under authority. Did you know what Jesus said about that? I say unto you, verse 10, I've not found so great a faith, no, 
not in all of Israel. Amen? I'm, ta- I'm starting out here with the highest level of how you can receive healing. Hear the spoken word of God and receive it. Hmm. I'm, I'll give you maybe another example here. Uh, go, yeah, Mark chapter 2. If you want to go with me to uh, Mark chapter 2 here. And uh, eh, let's see here. We'll go down to verse 10, if you will. Mark chapter 2. And uh, let's go down to verse 10. Um, we'll start reading there. There, there was um, uh, a palsy man being healed here. And uh, it says um, uh, in verse 8, uh, people were, because he had said in verse 5, Lest Jesus saw their faith, the man that was let down through the roof, you know the story. He said in verse 5 where he said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. That was spoken word, right? Forgiveness of sin. And, and then in verse 8, uh, Jesus uh, perceived that, he perceived it in his spirit that these reasoning people were reasoning within themselves and said, uh, why reason ye these things in your hearts? And, and, and Jesus said that to them. Why reason ye these things? And, and then in verse 9, he explained it. What is easier to say to the sick of the palsy? Now, that's a physical disease, right? Is it easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee? Or is it easier to say, arise, take up your bed and walk? (laughs) One of the things there, you see, the spoken word of God healed him. And another thing, too, you see the close association of sin and sickness. Mm-hmm. All right, now, now that's uh, healing by the spoken word. I, w- I want us to look at uh, healing here, a couple of scriptures on that. Uh, first one, you're in the book of Mark. There, go with me to chapter 5. And uh, I want us to uh, look down here. And um, this, this is examples of laying on of hands. Know about that? Did you know laying on of hands is one of the first principles mentioned in the book of Hebrews chapter 6? Doctrine of <laughs> laying on of hands. Amen. It's right there. Jesus did it. So anyway, uh, here, here was a story in Mark chapter 5 of where um, uh, a ruler of the synagogue, his daughter was dead. And uh, Jesus did go to the house where they uh, were making, it says, a big ado about it. And and then he made the statement Jesus did in verse 39. She's not dead, but she sleepeth. And then they laughed at him at more. And then in verse 41, here is a combination of actually laying on or touching and speaking too. But listen to this. He took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Tabitha Kumai, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Amen. He touched her. Amen. There was power there, right? And then uh, in, in the same Mark chapter 6 and verse 5, uh, let's look at this one. Now, this is explaining what we talked about before when Jesus went back to his hometown of Nazareth. Remember that? And uh, so, let's see what else happened there. Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but is his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. We read that a while ago. Now, this is further explanation in verse 5 of what we read there in Matthew. And it says, he could there do no mighty work. We knew that. We've already saw that. Save, here's what Jesus was able to do according to Mark. Jesus was able to lay his hands upon a few sick folk and heal them. Now that tells me different things right there. It means that he could do no mighty works there, right? 
No mighty miracles. Jesus would have loved in his own hometown to have spoken the word of God and seen multitudes delivered of all kinds of disease. But it says a few sickly folks, and then some translations bring that out, uh, people that had minor ailments. <laughs> Amen. Well, nothing wrong with getting a minor ailment healed. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. But no mighty works could be done. But you know what? When everything else failed, here comes Jesus. I'm going to lay my hand on you. <laughs> and he did get some results. So laying on of hands is, is, is also a way that Jesus ministered. You got it? All right, one other thing, and then I'll close. In uh, Luke chapter 17, and uh, I want to show you of how people have even received on their own faith. That's right. Luke chapter 17, and let's go down here, uh, read verses 11 uh, through 19. It says, it came to pass, Luke 17, 11, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, they passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and uh, he entered into a certain village, and there met him ten men who were lepers. They stood afar off. That was what they were supposed to do. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show thyself unto the priest. Now that was a word spoken, like I said, go. And notice here. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. Go, and as they went, they saw, I'm, he I'm being healed. Gradual. Recovery. That's, that's the bottom line, isn't it? Recovery. All right. And it says, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, you know, I, I believe he saw that, hey, this old leprosy is, uh, it's not there anymore. But he looked, hey, there's the results of it. Because it eats away the flesh. He saw that he was healed. He turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. He was a Samaritan again, see, not a Jew. Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? There are not found that returned glory to God, save this one stranger. And he said unto this, Cleansed leper, arise and go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. You know what I believe that meant? Everything was restored back.